The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, Thursday morning, as we come into another day where we got news, folks. We have GDP shrinking for the second consecutive quarter. The recession date, it's going to rage on. Now the whole conversation, my friends and I were having it last night, right? What is the technical definition? We're all going to get a quick listen in that, uh, and we're all going to have our opinions. Nonetheless, the facts are we have GDP shrinking for the second straight quarter. We'll get into that in a moment. The market, though? Uh, when bad news is good news, as some have said, pretty remarkable that that's the world we're in. But that's the case, folks. You look at the action on 830, you spike lower, almost down to 4,000. Market spikes up to 4,030. We're sitting above where we were on that GDP number, currently at about 4,020. That's following the acceleration we got yesterday. Federal Reserve, Chairman Powell, they hiked by 75 basis points. Uh, Chairman's press conference following that. Uh, there's a lot you can read into that in terms of where you go. Yes, they don't have a set path in terms of no. That he didn't say we're going to bring it with 75 again. He didn't say that at all. He said they're going to go by what the data says. But realistically, folks, that has to be the answer, whether he says it or not. You have two months. We'll talk to our man Kevin Hinks coming up after the break. Can't wait to get his takes on, take on things because no matter what he had said, right? Here's the important part. I was listening to some great analysis prior to the press conference yesterday. No matter what he had said yesterday, it almost wasn't going to matter. If they decided to go for guidance, it almost would have been unfair to their task at hand when you are going to get so much data over the next couple of months. The last data that we have, folks, is June CPI, right? It's not the last data we have. We now have a shrinking GDP. That's the last data we have from 38 minutes ago for the second quarter in a row. But when Chairman Powell was coming out, their guidance, the last data he had, was basically a record inflation number. That was for the month of June. We are now in July. You're going to go to August, and then you're going to go to September for the next meeting. So you're telling me that they're supposed to make guidance yesterday on June data for decisions that they're going to make in September? Not happening, folks, okay? Uh, it sounds dovish on the front. But it could ramp up into very hawkish uh, guidance if they're going to go by the data and we get inflationary data persisting. Now, I'm not sure that's the case. What that really means is that all the chips are going to be on the table when we get some of these economic data prints, especially as we come in to that next meeting. We might have a little bit of lull here in the Fed volatility. Doesn't mean we're going to have a lull in earnings volatility or GDP volatility, uh, which still matters indeed. But nonetheless, here we go. S&P is down by three. Not, ta not too bad considering the run that we had yesterday. You just hold on to those gains. The S&P is 107 points above where we were less than 48 hours ago. Context, very important. NASDAQ 100, 500 points from where we were 48 hours ago, less than 12,570. We got meta earnings, bringing that down a little bit. We'll get into that a little bit later in the program. The Dow right now accelerates above 32,000 to 32,315 last night. We're still sitting above that level at 32,131. The Russell, only major index currently in the green right now, positive by two points on the futures. Bitcoin, you talk about a run for Bitcoin yesterday, man. We got 23,000 from 20,710 just on Tuesday, yes. Uh, crude trades higher. We almost got $100 this morning. We're back under 99, 98.82. That's not going to help inflation, folks, with crude coming back to 100 bucks. Pretty remarkable, right? This week from 93, looks like we've been hovering around 95. Had a great conversation with our man Teddy Kegstat yesterday early, talking about, yeah, you know, you can't deny when you take a look at crude on a daily, right? Let's just zoom in on the action that we've had. You cannot deny, folks. Just look at where I put my my cursor on my chart. $94. Maybe that's the best fit line. Maybe, right? Maybe linear regression of those lows. Where do you end up? Uh, you could call it an art, not a science. Do you take the tails? Do you take the bodies? Okay. Nonetheless, no matter where you end up, 
we were pretty close yesterday, some pretty critical action. And what did we do? We bounced. Now, where, how, how high do we bounce? We didn't even get to 100 bucks yet. We're trading, though, right near that price level. And gold finally catching a bid as well on yesterday's number. Gold, there's a pop for you. Yeah, the 2.30 press conference from Chairman Powell from about 17.40 up to above 17.50. Gold was already positive on the session. Today, you're up $23.80 at 17.61. Now, keep in mind that this $24 pop is incorporating the move you got yesterday because futures close in gold. I believe it's 2.30, right? Or is it 1.30? It's 1.30 or 2.30. Gold contract futures close. Uh, so the session technically beginning at about 1.30 or 2.30 in the Eastern time in the afternoon for that gold contract. And we got to jump to notes and bonds. We got a little bit of higher price and lower yield coming at you right now. You're talking about a yield of 2.7%. Pretty remarkable. We got almost a 3.5% just like that. You're backing off. You're at 2.7%. You take a look at this thing on a weekly basis. Now, what's interesting here is I'm going to back it all the way up. There's your tenure, Okay. I mean, look at the tail you get underneath the lows that we had in 2018, right? Talk about a tail. Now, that's a monthly. That's the monthly tail for June. July, we're popping nicely. I'm going to put things back onto a daily. Okay, there's that same low that we got to. And now I'm going to zoom in just to see where we are in terms of the acceleration we had. That recent high, you're talking about March of this year. You back it up to really December 20th when we're at a 131. You trade down to 114. I'm going to back this out even a little further. Now, that's talking about COVID, COVID low yields of half a percent, okay? The trend has been down in a big way. You could make the case, though, that this acceleration started in August of 2021, and the floor really dropped out in March, although you could make the case it started in December, right? Nonetheless, interesting that we catch a bounce kind of right where we caught a bounce in May, and we are now a full six and a half points off of the lows that we have as you have yields at three point, excuse me, 2.7 percent down from 3.5 percent, the yield on the 10 year. All right. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks, see how we kick things off after the bell tonight. We get Amazon and we get Apple. Everything was trading higher yesterday, man. We jump over to the analyze tab. So these companies, as of the close last night, OK, Amazon, about a six dollar move. $6.26 priced into that equity. Apple, you're talking about a $5.26 move. Amazon right now trading at 120 with a $6 move. Apple right now, lower volatility, trading at 156 with a 526. I mean, Amazon, you know, there's a lot at stake, man. Last quarter, not, not the earnings that you would have wanted. And there was your drop off, right? You continued after that drop off as Amazon pre-split. Okay, at that time, but post split numbers from 142 down to 124, and you really bottomed out at about 102. Now we're almost 20% off of the lows. This thing's had a little bit of a pop here, uh, but when they came out last quarter, man, they said that they might lose money the following quarter as well. There's gonna be some tough goes around potentially for Amazon and Apple. I think I have an article pulled up here on Apple. Yeah, the run that Apple has had in their earnings. Let me see if I can find even the headline that I had up here in terms of it. Here we go. Because this is something to think about, man. Check out check out this Apple chart, okay? Apple, I've talked about this one before. This is a perfect way to come into this. Check out the five-year weekly, okay? Apple, the full COVID run. Look how close it is to the highs. The NASDAQ 100, folks, for context, is sitting right now below the 382. Apple's above the 236. The headline, that's not the headline. We'll talk about Apple when we get back. There's your headlines. Raises the stakes. We'll talk to our man, Kevin Hicks. We'll be right back, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now. You're up by one point. NASDAQ 100 barely in the red. Dow negative by one point. Russell in the green. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time right here on Tiger TV. Fast market with your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action. And, folks, there's nothing like this week to check out the program. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, Tommy, to the participation trophy economy that we find ourselves in because, you know, Jerome Powell, I think is one of the most effective fed chairs in my career. But I think in terms of how he described the economy yesterday, he got it wrong. I think he should have said there can be strong recessions. There can be very weak recessions. There can be recessions with strong uh, employment, but make no mistake, two quarters of negative growth is a recession, Tommy, period, end of statement. Kevin, I'm going to get you into our group chat with my friends and I, because last night, and this spans more than just financial professionals, what were we talking about? We're talking about the, the definition of a recession ahead of the number yep. this morning, man. A lot of people are going to be talking about it. Now we know what camp you're in. It's hard to deny when you got shrinking GDP, man. Uh, many of my friends making the same case that you're making right there. And we get the number this morning. And what does the market do, Kevin? We're positive by three points right now. And that's after a heck of an acceleration yesterday. Um, what did you think of the chairman's remarks talking about, you know, they got to be data dependent? It seemed pretty reasonable. Yeah. And that's where... Yeah, you got to go at this point with two months, as you mentioned yesterday, until their next meeting. Yeah, I'm like the market. I loved his comments other than him saying that we're not in a recession. I understand why he would say that, right? The, the world we live in now, the truth is what they can convince you to believe. But the markets are the final arbiter of what's going on in the overall economy. And so, but the other, uh, all, his other comments, I, I thought were... As usual, right? He's proficient 
at giving the economy or the markets the news they want in the right manner. And I think he he did that. So I think he, he was just dovish enough uh, to talk about that. But he also gave very positive comments on why people should still believe it. But um, listen, I, I, I think the market made the decision on what Jerome Powell's comments were. And the market, we said during Fast Market yesterday, if you if you watch the show, market could either go to unchanged or double its move from where it was when, when the show was on. And sure enough, it doubled the move from where we were. So I, Jerome Powell usually speaks pretty friendly to the overall market, and I thought that's what he did again yesterday, other than the one exception of his view of the uh, recession. It is pretty remarkable that he has that statement at a hike of 75 basis points, which is the second consecutive hike of 75 basis points because inflation is raging. And it's also the day before we literally get two quarters of GDP print. Um, he had to know that that was possibility coming. So I'm sure he was very aware of it. And nonetheless, uh, we, we're, we're going to find out where we go from here as well. Um, one of the arguments that one of my friends was making last night is, you know, by the technical definition, it's always backward looking as well. So even if you're, you know, you're having this debate and you got to have whether it's the the economist on board, man, um, you know, usually you can only figure that out by the technical de definition, if that's where you want to go to um, in a rear rear looking, you know, fashion. That's that's one take on things that I'll, I'll throw in there with that. Kevin, we got meta last night, some tough earnings for them. Uh, they are yep. trading lower by about seven bucks this morning. They lost two point eight billion dollars in the virtual reality augmented reality segment. Um, ads slowing as well. They're only back to where you were Tuesday, though, after the run they had. What do you think of Facebook meta earnings after the bell last night? Yeah, I think uh, some of the fears that Snap gave us came to fruition, right? Ad spending is slowing as we we hit a slower economy. And that's it. You know what? Here's what I think in a bigger picture, Tommy. Facebook has been on cruise control for years and years and years where Mark Zuckerberg could basically do anything he wants and Facebook was growing big enough so he could make mistakes and they'd be covered up by incredible growth. This is going to test in, in, and see if Mark Zuckerberg is a true uh, CEO who can manage not just easy, massive growth, but choppy waters as well and the transition of a company from one place to another. So I think this is going to figure out if he's good or just lucky, Tommy, because most people that are successful are just lucky. We're going to find out if he's good. You know, it's going to be interesting. I, I got uh, an Oculus Quest 2 for Christmas, I believe. Time is flying, man. I can't believe it was last Christmas. It's already almost going to be August. Um, and it kind of blew my mind immediately, Kevin. It really did. I imagine the future at some point is going to be deeply rich in virtual reality and augmented reality. But, man, we may have some time play out. Uh, if you just go back to self-driving cars, folks, I mean, even Elon Musk in 2019, I think he was saying in 2020 they're coming. These things, the last mile takes a long time. It's going to be the same thing with VR and AR. At some point, uh, it'll happen. One thing that did stick out on Facebook in, in Zuckerberg's credit, and I don't give him a lot of credit, really, because he's done a lot of things I don't agree with, but uh, they're decreasing their spending. Total expenses in 2022 between about 85 and $88 billion. The number they were previously putting out was 87 to 92 So there's a little management decreasing the spending. Uh, I'm sure investors like to see that, at least with the slowdown. With that in mind, Kevin, we got two big stocks coming up today. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12? Like I said, Tommy, I, on days like this, the shows write themselves. So we'll look at, uh, like Foley is going to do a presentation on Apple, of course. And then we'll look at Amazon. And then we'll look at, we're deciding right now between Roku and Intel, but we'll probably lead towards Roku. A little more a little more going on there than, than in Intel. But we haven't ruled it out yet. We're debating as we speak. But if you're, certainly if you're still, Amazon and Apple. If you're still taking votes for the third one, Kevin, I'll throw my vote to Roku. If it's if it's a, an election of the people, we'll throw it there. Intel, there great stock is. as well, we man. We just decided there we go. I mean, the volatility on some of these stocks, Kevin, even down from 490, Roku's got a range of like 77 to, to maybe 100 on a percentage basis. That is quite a range that this thing is bouncing around in. And Apple and Amazon, the two big ones. I was reading an article this morning, Kevin, on Bloomberg talking about Apple. Uh, 
on course for its biggest monthly gain since August of 2020. Quite a run up into these earnings as potentially up in the stakes for Apple. Uh, overperformed, can't deny that, versus this market sitting at 156. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the time as always, man. We appreciate the time this week on a busy week, and we'll be looking forward to the program at 12 o'clock today, man. Have a great one. Have a great weekend. And uh, we'll be watching at 12. Well, Tommy. Thanks for having Thanks me so on. much, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in. You heard it. Apple, Amazon, Roku, or Intel in the third segment. Uh, always a great program, especially today. You're going to get some GDP conversation, I'm sure. You'll get some Fed speak, of course, that comes into that, as always, when we have following yesterday's action. Um, and we'll find out. Apple and Amazon, man. And as I mentioned, right, you check check out Apple's run, folks, from the bottom of COVID at 53 bucks to the highs we came into this year at 182 you bounce off the 382, you got to love Fibonacci's, folks, right? They're not always right. They're not always wrong. But at least you have a nice, clear area that you can trade. You know, yeah, and you get under that area. Okay, it's not a, an exact science, 13285, the 382. Maybe you scale in around that price level, okay? We are well above the 236 right now. Even the NASDAQ 100, maybe the most comparable to Apple, isn't even at the 382, okay? Yeah, keep that in mind because Apple's been holding this market up relatively well. And if they start to suffer, that could be pretty ominous. We get a key of that tonight after the bell. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be back to the opening bell. In a time of booming inflation where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open for about 30 seconds and we're sitting comfortably higher right now. You got the S&Ps. I mean, check out the action. We come into the open, basically a pre-market session highs. S&Ps up by eight right now. NASDAQ barely in the red. And that was after a heck of a day yesterday. What were we up yesterday? Three and a half, four percent on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ 100. Dow up 62 points right now within about 100 of the uh, high we had yesterday. And you got the Russell up by eight. Bitcoin above 23,000. Crude up 90 up, excuse me, up a dollar thirty-three, and you got the gold contract continuing to climb right now. You have yields continuing to drop, jumping over to the ten-year. They're talking about in the Tigers Den breaking out. Check out that acceleration from eight thirty. Man, we're up a full point. We are up a full point right now from where we were trading, just at eight thirty this morning. Excuse me, two point six six percent. That's mind blowing, man. Two point six six percent down from three point five percent within a hair of that number, at least not that long ago. Okay, jumping back to Apple. Apple and Amazon, after the bell tonight, Apple up four-tenths percent, coming into that number. Amazon up four-tenths percent, coming into that number. We jump back to Apple. So the article from Bloomberg here, just pointing out a few things, right? So Apple's up 15% this month so far, folks. There's the volatility that we've been seeing over since about August of 2020 when it had some accelerations as well. Apple has already performed some of the other tech giants tremendously. Apple is outperforming because it's a place of safety for investors. That's Gene Munster, who covered Apple and Google during his 21-year career as an analyst at Piper Jaffray. Familiar with that name. Um, he's got Loop Ventures now. Every company will be impacted by the upcoming slowdown. Apple should fare better. Probably part of the reason why Warren Buffett's got such a stash in Apple, right? They're the new uh, GE of everything. The rally means investor expectations are high for the company's quarterly earnings due to the market close Thursday. Uh, I would say so, folks. I mean, I keep bringing it up, right? Apple's got a lot of expectations sitting at 157 right now, man. All you're back to, folks, all right? You talk about a, a depth of a reception, a recession. All you're back to is November 18 prices. No, excuse me, November 18th, not November of 18. November 18th prices of last year. The market peaked out six weeks later, okay? Uh, a, a catastrophic bear market is not usually when the biggest company in the world gives back six weeks of gains, right? I mean, think about that. This has been a run for some context here. In 2008, Apple was trading at $2.90. You went up to 182, you came back to 140 and you're at 156. It's been a bull run since 2008, folks. I mean, crazy to think about that it was trading at that time. I mean, going back, I mean, what is this? I mean, Apple was a big company in the 90s, folks, even when they're having problems and there are pennies on this price, right? They were launching the iPod in what, 2001? When did they launch the iPod? It's crazy to run this company, iPod launched. Let's see, 2001, yeah. October 23rd, 2001. Let's get it. Stock was at about a quarter, crazy. Now it's been 20 years, I'm, I'm dating myself a little bit, okay? Uh, but nonetheless, back to Apple, they've overperformed the market and they come into their numbers tonight. You jump over to the Analyze tab. They got about a $6 move priced in at $160 stock. So you're talking about about 4%. Amazon, a little bit more percentage-wise, $6.78 for $120 stock. Now, Amazon, not so much the case, man. Not overperforming the market at all. Apple, all you're back to is November prices, right? That would put Amazon at seven, 170. You're at 120. Amazon, actually closer to 2018 prices than it is November prices to put things in context. Uh, completely different businesses, so not really comparing them like that. But nonetheless, and look at this, Amazon, actually negative. As they pull back a little bit, you get a positive open, they give back about a dollar real quickly. Let's jump to see how Apple's doing. They're actually negative as well. Roku after the bell tonight. Yeah, you talk about some volatility, man. Roku up $10 from where it was on Tuesday, let alone it was at 97 bucks last week. You got some tough earnings. Um, from some of the digital advertising companies, whether it was Snapchat, the likes, Facebook, probably not helping that out as well. Roku opens flat today. Now you want to see some volatility, man. $10.70. So what is that talking about? 12, 13%, all the markets in the green. Quite a market, folks. You got all the markets in the green right now. You got the Fed hiking 75 basis points consecutively. You have two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. And the market's like, we're going higher, man. 
We're going higher, and we're within six points of the highs of yesterday. Now, taking a look at where we're going, folks, boy, you better get very careful at 4,200 in this market. My dad's been talking about it as well. 4,200 is going to be a critical area. I would even say once you start getting to 4,100, you're going to start approaching whether it was the high we got back to on May 18th, May 17th, May 18th. You were up at about 4,095 was the technical high. Those are correlating to some of the lows that we had from early May, also correlating to some of the lows we had from March, also correlating to the low we had from February. That low in February, 4,101. Anytime you start bumping up into areas that have been resistance, uh, excuse me, support. They were support. They can turn into areas of resistance. Lots of areas on that chart, folks. When you get into the 4,100 to 4,200 range in this market, be careful in this market. I mean, you know, you go back to October, you were only at 4,260. With everything going on, 9.1% inflation, two consecutive quarters of GDPs decreasing, uh, supply chain issues still taking place in a big way, and and you're telling me the S&Ps are within a stone's throw of where we were just last October. Now, you can't deny the market got ahead of itself in the final quarter of last year. That was kind of where the steam had run out. You just plowed into the new year and then the market sold off and gave back the last quarter within 24 days of, of the year starting. But nonetheless, be careful. We'll see how the earnings go today. But everybody is cheerleading Chairman Powell yesterday, folks. I couldn't wait to open my phone this morning and see where the futures have been because the last few meetings, we've gotten some big moves and then you've had reversals on the following day kind of the market digest things or whatever happens. I feel like the market's getting a little bit ahead of itself thinking it's the greatest news ever that the chairman has not forecasted 75 basis points or 50 at the next meeting. Okay, because all he did is he said, we're going to wait for the data. There was the allusion to potentially pausing or there being a delay. You know, I was listening to it. I was trying to listen to those words very, very closely. But as I said, kind of in the beginning of the program, there was really no other choice. No matter what got said there, in Chairman Powell's mind, I imagine he is saying, man, we got a lot of data to go over the next two months. The last data we really got for CPI was already stale at the time, right? The last big data point we have for, for inflation was the CPI number from June. It's about to be August, and they don't have another meeting to hike until September, so, of course, they're going to be very interested in the June number, in the July number, in the August number, right? Excuse me, in the July number and the August number. We already got the June number. So you got July and August. They're going to be coming out before their meeting in September, along with every other data point that goes with that, along with the earnings of many companies. Everything is going to hang on the PCE, the CPI, wage wage growth. Um, everything is going to hang on that. And if those CPI numbers are big, folks, the conversation is going to shift just as quickly as it did over the last three months to higher rate hikes. The market didn't know 75 was coming consecutively, but guess what? It figured it out when we got some data. We'll bring right it back. has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite cover of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar, Dollar Yen, Dollar Swiss Franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps barely holding on to gains right now. A little bit of a pullback, though, from those highs. We're down about 15 points. You're still positive by one point on the S&Ps. NASDAQ goes red. NASDAQ 100, negative by 56 points. Down negative by 16. The Russell leading the way positive, up three quarters percent, up by about 14 to 1861. So jumping back to uh, the GDP, a little recession talk, or basically the probability of that occurring. So the economy shrinks for a second quarter, raising recession odds. The one thing to keep in mind here, okay, that is an important part of this conversation, which probably is not going to get brought up as much as it should, is this is a preliminary first estimate of GDP. I think it gets revised two or three times. And many times, especially right now, with all the volatility going on in this market and how hard it is to peg some of the data, we have seen some huge revisions to those GDP numbers. So what you're going to see is, like I'm seeing out there this morning, um, my friends are chatting about it as well. I got some smart friends, folks. They're having some great conversations because there's so much up in the air right now. Um, and you can make great points about both sides of it, folks. And we don't know who's right or wrong right now. That's a great. That's what makes a market, right? Kevin Hanks, you heard him, man. It's a recession. The one thing is that this is first look. They call it preliminary estimate showed Thursday on the first look. We've had some huge revisions to GDP going on. Uh, one comment out there this morning I was reading saying the last 10 times there have been consecutive quarters, it's been a recession. But that's the last 10 times that you had the final estimate of GDP. Okay, and many times there's been some steep, steep revisions on both sides of it there is a very real chance that one of these quarters from 1.6 or 0.9 gets a revision to the positive side before it's all said and done keep that in mind okay these are not the final numbers this is the first number in an economy that is very difficult to peg and i don't know how they do it man i don't got the fundamental uh grasp of how you peg a gdp that is so large and so broad in terms of how you get that number and how it goes through or the first estimate, second estimate, third. But those numbers take a while to come in. And there's always huge revisions, especially right now with how hard it is to have uh, an analysis of really what's going on. Now, that's the conversation around two consecutive quarters, okay? But if you're looking for uh, the technical Okay, definition. There's no recession recession until an obscure panel of quote unquote egghead says so. Now this is from June, July, excuse me, earlier this month, okay? But it's talking about what the other side of that is. And you're gonna hear, they're loudly debating. We're debating it this morning, right? Uh, a recession technically is made by eight eminent economists, meaning quietly far from public view. So what is it, folks? It is the National Bureau of Economic Research based where? 
beautiful Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, and they don't like that analysis of two quarters. Recessions have huge impact on the markets and politics. You got to know that. Uh, right now, it is led by Robert Hall, 78-year-old Stanford University professor. And yeah, he's going to get a lot of limelight right now with this conversation. Uh, this the National Bureau, Bureau, let me get the exact, uh, of economic research established in 1978 by a Reagan advisor, been around for a while. Um, yeah, so we'll see how it goes, man. Conversations already happening in the den, folks. If you haven't checked out the Tiger's Den, get in there and check out the Tiger's Den because we got some volatility coming down the line, man. You get ready for those economic numbers, folks, because with no guidance from the Fed and inflation raging and at least the first estimates we're getting of GDP on two consecutive quarters of negative action, the data is going to be more important than maybe ever before. I mean, I've never had data determine whether the Fed is going to be hiking by 75 basis points to tame 9% inflation. That's pretty important data if that's what's at stake. And that's literally where we sit right now. All right. Yeah, they go over everything, right? A third of economists see a recession ahead. Um, so anyway, that's going to play out. All right, let's jump to some of the other stories we got going on. JetBlue to buy Spirit for $3.8 billion. So Frontier um, backed out of this deal. Spirit subsequently said it would continue talks to be acquired by JetBlue. It's going to be interesting to see how this plays out with antitrust, especially I was reading in some of the northeast ports like Boston and New York. And I hope they do, man, because I'm going to be flying into Boston. And uh, those are two competitors right now that are going to team up. JetBlue, that's been the airline that I usually fly in terms of in the past flying they have some great routes from tampa to boston uh but frontier is out of the bidding and so that's going to allow JetBlue to buy spirit airlines for 3.8 billion but that's going to take some time to play out It'll be interesting to see how that plays out let's jump over Ooh, look at these markets watch out folks so JetBlue, they're down about eight tenths percent what is spirit save is that it right yeah yeah, Spirit's up 3.6%. Now, the price that they'd be paying for this, 32-something, right? Where are we? 33.50 a share, including a $2.50 prepayment if Spirit shareholders approve the deal and 10 cent ticking fee starting next year until the deal is approved. JetBlue really wants to get it done, man. They were trying to juice up that offer to get ahead of Frontier. The surprise all-cash bid is for Spirit in April through Spirit's plan to combine with Frontier into a disarray, and JetBlue got it done, man. They blew up that deal. Now Spirit has to go with JetBlue, and we're going to see that play out. But thirty-three fifty is the price, and you can see the market somewhat skeptical as it's only trading right now at twenty-five fifty. All right, other stories I got up there. What do we got? Let's talk a little Facebook, okay? So Facebook's out with their numbers last night, and they missed pretty pretty broadly. Uh, you're talking about earnings of 246 versus 259. Revenue misses by 28.82 billion versus 28.94. Daily active users up by a tick. Monthly active users down by a tick. Average revenue per user, they miss by a penny. But man, when you're talking about 2.94 billion, 2.93 billion people, and you're making 10 bucks off a person, folks, that's a staggering number to put it lightly. Uh, revenue in the second quarter fell 1% from a year earlier. Not what you want to see. Uh, disappointing third quarter forecast. Continuation of the weak advertising demand environment we experienced throughout the second quarter, which we believe is being driven by broader macroeconomic uncertainty. Pay attention to that one, man. Um, they're going to reduce the headcount over the next year as it tightens its belt for an economic slowdown. I alluded to that with our man, Kevin Hanks. That's one thing that you like to see, folks, because one of the biggest problems that this company could face, they're still going to make tons of money in ads, folks, okay, is are they going to outspend themselves? Is Zuckerberg going to try and, and solve virtual reality overnight and spend all the money they make on WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, and the likes? Well, at least he's willing to back things down. Revenue in the third quarter will be in the range of 26 to 28.5 market was looking for 30.5 that's quite a miss okay that's a decline of 2 to 11 percent from a year ago declining revenue 2 to 11 percent quite a haircut man uh they talk about cheryl stanberg stepping down so their headcount increased 32 percent from a year earlier to 83,553. the company indicated earlier in the period they're going to slow the plan of hiring 
echoing the sentiment of many of their peers, and there's the the revision in terms of their total expenses. I mean, that's a revision of two to four billion dollars less. They're now going to spend a maximum of eighty eight billion. Prior it was going to be ninety two. Uh, they may spend as low as eighty five. The prior was eighty seven. Virtual reality. They brought in four hundred fifty two million dollars in sales in Meta's Reality Labs. They still lost two point eight billion dollars in ninety days. Woo. Talk a little bit more when we get back about this. We'll take a look at some of the companies uh, that are coming out besides these two after the bell tonight. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So much for 32,000 in the Dow and so much for 4,000 in the S&P. We're right at those levels right now, basically. 39.99 in the S&P. Talk about a give back of 1% just like that. Dow right now negative by 178 points, under 32,000. You got the NASDAQ 100 off more than 1%. We're almost right back to where we were on the press conference, right? Whew. Pretty remarkable how the day of action on Fed Day versus the following day you've seen reversals almost continually it's only 25 minutes into trading man but we got a reversal going on and check out the two big dogs apple off 1.1 percent right out of the gate amazon off almost two percent out of the gate you got roku off three percent with their earnings after the bell tonight uh other companies we got autozone out with their numbers tomorrow excuse me let me pull that out a lot of companies are had those numbers 
Uh, they're down with the market 2.2%. Uh, we also had some other companies out with their numbers early this morning. So MasterCard down about four tenths percent on their numbers. Comcast with some weak numbers, man. They're down 9% right now. Pfizer off 4.5% right now. Intel is after the bell. They're off 1.1%. You jump over to Anal Analyze tab. That's about a $2.40 move. So you're talking about a 6% move priced into Intel after the bell. Uh, what else we got that was already out there? Yeah, Harley Davidson uh, with their numbers. Decent numbers for Harley Davidson, trading up 7.8%, a, uh, a lone bright spot almost on a tough day for some of the equities. All right, folks, head on over to the front page of TFN. Please check out Teddy's report, the Tiger Forex report. Only a couple days left. You save 25% when you put in code TEDDY25 out there. And if you haven't checked it out, folks, Steve Rhodes put out a great report last Friday. Special report. Folks, this is all you got to do, okay? Right here on the front page. Click here to read the special report. No strings, nothing to sign up for. There's your special report. Go check it out right now on the front page of TFNN. Steve Rhodes putting out a great report. He just saw some action in the market. He wanted to share it with everybody, tigers and tigresses. That's on the front page of TFNN.com right there, free as well. Check it out, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Talk about some volatility. Talk about a trader's market. Thanks so much for starting your day off with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got Basil up next. Larry, he's still a little under the weather. Okay, but then we got fast market at 